Hi folks, Paul here. I wanted to talk a wee bit about going on holiday. It's almost the end of the year, which for people in New Zealand means holiday season. And um, me and my wife and son are planning to head away in the next month or so. And the plan is to go away for two weeks. And that means I'll need to leave the power wall to its own devices without any monitoring or intervention. So I wanted to talk a wee bit about what my plan was to maybe give you some ideas and also to get uh, ideas from you guys on uh, what I should be thinking about. I've got 500 watts of solar power going into the solar charge controller and that the output of that the charge is going into the 2 kilowatt hour power wall. The output of that goes to this basically multi-box thing and that goes straight to the 2 kilowatt hour small blocks on the wall and also the 1 kilowatt power shelf. And those currently are still running with no BMS. So far they seem to have settled down to about 0.1 of a volt difference between the highest and lowest group and but um, I don't really want to leave the whole system running unattended in this configuration uh, with for two whole weeks so my plan is to remove one of the solar panels from the input so that I've only got 250 watts coming in and that will prevent me from uh, always having everything uh, charged up to the maximum. And then I'm going to disconnect the small blocks, the 2 kilowatt hour small blocks, and also disconnect the power shelf and leave those to just drift on their own for two weeks, um, not being charged and not being discharged. Meanwhile, the um, 2 kilowatt hour um, power wall will be draining slightly every day into this box here, which is a, a little web server, and there's a wee uh, router there. Those, at the moment, are draining at about 1 amp constantly. So, um, the two kilowatt hours will uh, cope with that quite happily. Not having these reduces the complications that arise from having everything um, floating unattended. Uh, this does have a BMS, so if anything goes pear-shaped, it should disconnect. Uh, the charge controller is set currently to only charge up to 28 volts and it's a 7S pack, so that means every um, group is theoretically getting about 4 volts, charging up to about 4 volts. So there's a bit of buffer there from the, the limit on the charge controller. There's a BMS that's also guarding against overcharging, and the BMS is also balancing the groups and also protecting against um, over discharge. Plus this this load over here is also connected via the charge controller which will disconnect it if it gets if the battery voltage gets too low. So I've got quite a I've got two um, bits of protection in the charge controller and the BMS which should keep everything running happily whilst I'm away. In addition to the solar going into the charge controller and battery, I've also up here got a 500 watt grid tie inverter, um, but that's only connected to one 250 watt solar panel. So it's only running at half capacity, which um, in my opinion is the right way to, to run these cheap Chinese grid tie inverters if you only um, power them to half what their supposed rating is, then um, that should be fine. 
uh, and I've actually got a second one that you can't see up over here. Um, so that's what I'm going to do, that's my plan for going away for two weeks and leaving this to run on its own. Um, I will probably take these pouch cells here, that you can see there, take those and put them outside in some waterproof container so that if anything does go crazy with those they won't um, burn the house down or the garage down. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I would love to hear if you have any um, ideas on what I could do to, in, to reduce my risk even further. And um, do you think I'm going overboard? Am I being too paranoid? Not paranoid enough? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.